In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we begin to celebrate these sacred mysteries here on ha- New Year's Day, it's Happy New Year. Um, one of the great gifts that we get uh, today is not only to be able to begin this new year, we also have the opportunity to begin this new year in worship. To be, we have the opportunity to begin this new year to commemorate the fact that Mary, our mother, is the mother of God. And we'll talk about that more on more later on uh, today. But as we enter into this time of worship, one of the things we, I think we mentioned it last week at the end of uh, the Christmas Mass. It was the end of Christmas Mass. Um, but, uh, so I don't know if you stayed or you left early, but um, this reality, of course, is we always pray, offer these Masses for you. In particular, we recognize that Virtually every person who joins us is joining us because they're unable to get to Mass in person. They're joining us because they're um, alone, isolated. They, For whatever reason, they haven't been able to get out of their homes. And so because of that, I just want to let you know that uh, we were praying before Mass started just for you in a particular way. That if you find yourself in a place of loneliness, a place of isolation, a place where you are alone, uh, know that you're not. Know that you might be physically alone, but you're part of the family of God and that you belong to the Lord, and we belong to each other. And so right now as we begin this Mass, and again commemorating what God has done in Mary, that she is the mother of God, we also remember that uh, we belong to each other, and because of that we need to pray not only for ourselves, but we are praying for each other. And so we come before the Lord and ask for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to seek and to save the lost. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You lived and intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through the fruitful virginity of blessed Mary bestowed on the human race the grace of eternal salvation, grant, we pray, that we may experience the intercession of her through whom we were found worthy to receive the author of life, our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we hear from God's word.
A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, This is how you shall bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly and give you peace. So shall they invoke my name upon the Israelites, and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to ransom those under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. As proof that you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Chapter 2, verses 16 through 21. The shepherds went in haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about the child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. When eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Wait, you have a seat. So as we just enter into this, well, Happy New Year, A. one of the things when it comes to the ends of the years, the beginnings of New Year's, um, we have this all the time, right? We have the end of the school year, we have the beginning of a new school year, we have the end of the church year, the beginning of the new church year. So we, it seems like we're always kind of marking the passage of time, which is super important. And we're going to get to that, why that's so important in just a second. But one of the, the other parts is why, why are we celebrating this solemnity? Why, in fact, why is this even a holy day of obligation? Thanks be to God, it's on a Sunday today. A little twofer for all of, all of us. Um, but, but this dogma that we believe that Mary is the mother of God. Um, you, I, it's interesting because I'll even find Christians who are like, eh, I don't really, is that accurate? Well, um, sorry, yes, it's accurate. But why is it accurate? What are we saying? One of the things we have to re- be reminded of is whenever we have a dogma or a doctrine about Mary, it's always ultimately about Jesus. And so why would we have this dogma, this doctrine, this massive teaching that we have to believe about Mary? Well, because it's what we have to believe about Jesus. Here's what I mean. There was this guy back in the day, his name was Nestorius. And Nestorius started the Nestorian heresy. And because when you start a heresy, they name it after you. So Nestorius had the Nestorian heresy in which he basically denied the fact that the reality that um, Jesus, the, the incarnate son of God, was always God. That at one point, he wasn't fully God. He became God later on, kind of a, a more like an adoption kind of a thing rather than by nature. So. Here's what the church says. The church says, okay, wait a second. Let's, let's pause. How many gods are there? There's one God. Got it. One God. There are three persons in God, right? So there's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So there's three divine persons. One divine being, three divine persons. This is kind of like the mental, don't get a headache. But three divine persons, one divine being. That second person of the Trinity, Jesus, right? The only begotten Son of God, the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, took on a human nature. So here is, in the womb of the Virgin Mary, here is a being, here's a person that has a human nature and a divine nature, but is a divine person. Does that make sense? So from all eternity, here is the second person of the Trinity, the Son of God, from all eternity has existed. In time, he took on a human nature, right? 2,000 years ago, in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So. Who, the question is, what is in the womb? The womb in the, in the womb of Mary is the God-man, right? Divinity and humanity. But who is in the womb? Well, who is in the womb is the second person of the Trinity. It's because if Jesus took on a, became a human person, there'd be four persons in the Trinity. So Jesus remained a divine person with a human and divine nature. He was that divine person with the human and divine nature in Mary's womb. Therefore, Mary gave birth to the Son of God, right? She gave birth to 
the second person of the Trinity. Now, he existed before her. So we're not saying Mary is the mother of the Trinity, but in a real way, the person that, she, for lack of a better term, she, the person she gestated and the person she gave birth to is the second person of the Trinity, is the only begotten Son of God. Does that make sense? Does that make kind of some sense? Okay, good. So because of that, to say anything less than Mary is the mother of God is not to deny anything about Mary. It's to deny something essential about Jesus. Last weekend, we celebrated the reality of the nativity, that Jesus was born into the world. Today, we're commemorating, okay, who, was, who is Jesus? Who was born into the world? Who was born into the world is the Son of God, the eternal Son of God, the only begotten of the Father, the second person of the Trinity. Okay, that's the dogma of Mary being the mother of God. In the Council of Ephesus in the year 431, if you want to know, the Council of Ephesus said, they declared this solemnly. So every Christian must believe this, not just Catholics, not just Orthodox, because we do profess this very clearly, but every Christian has to believe this. That's the dogma. But here, what's, what's, what do we want to talk about today? We want to hold that dogma sacred, close to our hearts. <sighs> Mary's the mother of God. She's also a model. So Mary's the mother of God, but she's, she's also our model. Especially as we come to the end of a, a year and starting a new year today, there's a, a scripture passage that St. Luke describes when he says, after the shepherds come to Jesus, Mary and Joseph, and they tell Joseph and Mary all that they had heard and seen, it said, Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. And one of the things we have to realize is that, you know, Luke, he wrote it, when he wrote his gospel, he said, I thoroughly investigated all these things. And we have, to under, we have to wonder if in his thoroughly investigating all these things, if he didn't actually go to the source. Luke is the only one who tells us these, infants, these, these, these nativity stories that we get, like today with the visit of the shepherds, or next weekend, like the visit of the Magi. You have to wonder if Luke didn't actually go to the source and ask Mary, so what, what happened? And she was able to answer for this maybe one very important reason, how she lived. She kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. See, I think too many of us, we're so busy. Yesterday was 2022, today is 2023. And we're just moving on to the next day, the next day. And then pretty soon it's going to be the end of that this year and it'll be the beginning of a new year. And we don't end up actually living we just end up existing. We just end up kind of going through life. Unless we do what Mary did. Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. So here's the three things. My, my invitation for all of us, even just today, even if it's just today, I think it'd be worth it. One is, um, when it comes to the, our, our experiences, when it comes to our thoughts, when it comes to our memories, to hold them. Then to reflect on them. And then to remember them, There's, which are three kind of, maybe three different sides of the same thing. But to hold them basically means to notice them. I mean, how much of life we just fail to recognize? How much of like the good things and bad things do we fail to acknowledge? Just not, we just even fail to notice them. Because I, I can look back and say, okay, another year, 2022. I don't know if this happened to you guys, but during the pandemic, like, I'm, like I don't know what year it was. It just kind of all blended together because big things happened and yet I didn't notice. Maybe I noticed at the time, but then they were forgotten. But to hold on to them means to notice, means to avoid failing to recognize. And not just failing to recognize the moments, but to recognize their value. There's a, there's a psychologist who, he's talked about this. When it comes to parents raising kids, he says, listen, you get your kids, you get them really small for four years. That's it. And then those four years are gone. And if you miss it, it's a, basically, it's a tragedy. Because you get those first four years, and to, I think of, uh, my siblings, I think of talking to other young parents who are just exhausted during those first four years. If you blink, they're gone. You know, I think there's something so powerful um, that when things are hard, when things are bad, it seems like they'll never end. But they always do. And when things are good, sometimes it can seem like they'll never end. And they always do. We have to realize this about life is that Good times will never, will, will never last, and neither will bad times. It always keeps going. And as, unless we stop and say, wait a second, I understand. I'm noticing. I'm holding on to the value of this moment. I miss it. You know, I, I've been on campus here. This is the 18th year, middle of my 18th year on campus, and it's incredible. At one point, I, I remember always thinking like, yeah, when the bishop asked me to move, I'll move whenever. It's not no big deal. Because the whole point was to be a parish priest in the first place. And then, I don't know, maybe... <clears throat> 
<clears throat> eight years ago or so, um, Bishop Serba called me into his office one April day and said, Father, I'm sorry, I have to send you to this parish. I'm like, I like what you're doing at the university, but um, there's a priest up in this parish and his doctor told him that he has to retire. He's just getting too old, too sick, and uh, I, don't have, I don't have anyone else, so you have to go. And I remember like, oh, I feel like it just, it literally, it not literally broke my heart because that would be a whole nother issue. Um, it, I just was so sad. I, I had not anticipated how sad I would be. It would, and I couldn't tell anyone. It was just for a whole week. I think probably people could tell because I was crying all the time. I wasn't really crying. But I was very, I just, it, was, it was so heavy. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I just assumed. I just assumed that this would go on. I remember looking at the freshmen thinking, I just assumed I would be with you for the rest of your time. I, looking at the juniors, thinking like, I just thought that I would be there with you until you graduated. And it was just, it highlighted, this is valuable. I just thought it would go on forever and doesn't. The next week he called me and he's like, yeah, uh, never mind. The priest got a second opinion from a different doctor and he said he could keep working, so I got to stay. Um, but it, it highlighted something. It highlighted the fact that too often I miss it. Too often I miss the value of a moment. And even the value of the challenge of the moment. You know, the value of the difficulty. Here's Mary in, in today's reading. She gave birth in a cave because there was no room. She placed... She and Joseph placed their child in a manger. We talked about that last, uh, last Sunday on Christmas. It was not a good day. But Mary held on to this because it was an important day. That even struggles, I think, are worth noting. So again, a little story. Um, a couple, well, so a lot of times on Saturday mornings, I will go down to like a coffee shop and just like frantically scramble to try to get a homily ready and all these kind of things. And, and there are some days when I'll, I'll show up there and look around and all these people are just like, sipping on their coffee and having their scones, like reading the newspaper or doing the crossword puzzle or even like reading a book for fun. And I remember looking around this room going like, these people, they don't understand, you know? Like I have to work this day. And one, one weekend, a couple summers ago, I was, I was here in Duluth and I had an assignment, but it got canceled. And so I thought, well, I'll go to my parents' place and no one was home, so I just stayed in Duluth. And it was one of those weekends where I got the weekend off and it was completely unexpected. And I found myself like, okay, Friday, I don't, I don't have to stress. Saturday, I, I could go down to the coffee shop and just like read a book. Like even Sunday, I, I got up and said mass and everything. If there were a couple students here, said mass for them. But there was no pressure. It was great. But I got to the end of that day on Sunday and I thought, okay, I mean, coming here and praying, praying and saying, okay, God, thank you so much for this weekend. I don't want to have another one of these for a long time. Because there's something, it was great. It was a gift. It was a, like a, a, but sometimes to have something to do, right? To have a task to, to realize that this is important. It can be a burden, but at the same time, it is a burden that is an honor. It is a privilege. Um, reali we, the reality is, is that someday every one of us will long for the days. In fact, I would say one day we're going to miss the things that we, claim, we, that we complain about today. One day pretty much almost every one of us will long for the things that we complain about today. So here's the first thing about Mary, which is like, hold on to these things. Like, notice the gifts, notice the struggles to, to carry them. And then the second is to reflect on them, right? Which is kind of the same thing, but it's just the next step. Because again, we can be so busy. I, I can, this is, I'm preaching myself, by the way, right now. You guys all know this. They're like, Father, take notes for yourself. Because I, I'm so easy to move on to the next thing. Okay, we did that. Great. Moving on to the next thing. Instead of stopping, and reflecting. In fact, some of my brother priests kind of, uh, I don't want to say lectured me, they were sharing. They were sharing with me in the room that uh, while it's important, in fact, necessary for us to pray, they said it is just as important to have time not just to pray and talk with the Lord, but to reflect. Like to, to stop and create space in one's life to just ponder, right? Here's what Mary did. She kept all these things. She held them, right? And she reflected on them in her heart. Because we either, this is the truth is, we either live reflectively or we live reflexively. It, it, it's really one or the other. 
We either live reflectively and we, we go over their day and say, wait a second, I just reacted like that. Why did, why did I do that? What's going on in the course of my heart? How many times um, do we go back to confession for the same thing? We confess the same sin over and over again and we haven't necessarily stopped and asked, wait, where does this come from? In fact, Sister Miriam James, amazing, amazing uh, religious sister, uh, she led this retreat here in Minnesota a couple months back called Healing the Whole Person Retreat. And one of the things that she had shared, she said, you know, our sins are not arbitrary. This was so powerful for me. She said, our sins are not arbitrary. Whatever your sins are, that's connected to something. Like whatever the fruit of your sin is, it's connected to some kind of root. It comes from somewhere, especially those sins that we confess over and over again, the ones that are always there. And if we, take, if we don't take time to reflect on them, we're simply going to automatically default to them. We either live reflectively or we live reflexively. And unless I take that time and say, okay, what just happened? What is the weight of this? What's the gift of this? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss it. I would even say this. I would even say people who take time to reflect. I have to kind of notice this a little bit in my life as I'm starting to do this. If you're a productive person or efficiency person, that this will be helpful because I think people who take time to reflect get more things done because they end up doing the right things as opposed to the most of us who live reflexively and we just do whatever's there. But to live reflectively, to live like Mary, to hold all these, all these things and to reflect on them in our hearts is to live with purpose, especially, especially as we begin this new year. What was last year like? Let me reflect on that. What was, how about this? What was the last week from last Christmas to today? What was that like? Let me reflect on that. Where was God? What was he doing? Where is he calling me? to hold these things, reflect on them, and lastly, it's to remember them. You know, if you go back, you might today, today might be the day, uh, January 1st, where you start the Bible in a year, maybe for the first time or maybe for the third time. But when you press play, one of the things you're going to discover is all through the Old Testament, God has, I don't want to say God is just one word for his people, but there is a word that he says so many times that he says himself, that he says to the mouths of his prophets, that just comes up again and again in the Bible. And that word is remember. Just remember what the Lord God has done. Remember who you are. Remember whose you are. Remember, he says it again and again and again. Why? Because we, we're so quick to forget. I mean, hold these things, I might reflect on them, and then I'm on to the next thing. But we need to remember. In fact, I, I just rejo uh, rejoice. That's kind of a powerful word. I am happy about. <laughs> that's, that's, that's more where I'm at. Um, just this last week, with my family. Um, I know they do this. Whenever we get together, we all tell stories. In fact, I, we get this, I think, from my dad. My dad, growing up, he is notorious for telling the same stories over and over again. But we know them all. Why? Because he keeps telling them. We're like, Dad, he loves, he loves a new person introduced to the family or introduced because he's like, okay, no one, someone who's not heard any of my stories. And we're all like, okay, here we go. But because he repeats those stories, A, we know him better. B, we have become storytellers. We become people, when we get together, we're like, okay, this one of the stories is like, yeah, when Amy and Beth, my two oldest sisters, when they um, couldn't watch Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, that claymation thing one night because they, my parents were going out to eat, they had a babysitter, but the girls scraped their food into the garbage disposal and they weren't supposed to do this. And so that my mom turned it off and they complained about it every single year. But I know this story because they complained about it every single year. They tell the stories and it helps us remember to hold on to what God has done, to reflect on what God is doing, but to remember by telling those stories. And here's the big, the big thing is, if I don't have someone I can share this with, how am I going to remember? If I don't have someone who shares their stories, how are they going to remember? And so we just have to listen. What are the stories people are telling us? Because this was what it's important to them. This is what they're holding on to. This is what they're reflecting on. What are the stories we share with others? Because this is what we're holding on to. This is what we're reflecting on. And this is what we want to remember. And if I don't have anybody, maybe I don't, I can write these things down. I'm so amazed. This is the last thing. I'm so amazed by how often we have our students or our missionaries who will say something like, you know, I went over my, my journal, I was going over uh, my prayer journal and from the last month or from the last semester, or from last year, and I just realized here's what God was doing. And I think, oh my gosh, I should do that. <laughs> like, I should really take the time because they'll do this on a regular basis. At least every day or at least every week, if not every day, they'll take this time and say, okay, Lord, what do I want to notice? 
What do I want to hold on to? What have you done? What am I reflecting on? And then to write it down so that they can remember it and they go back and it just, again, it convicts my heart and as we begin this new year, it's one of those things that I want to do more intentionally because I want to live like Mary. Mary, in whom God did his greatest work, was the kind of person who didn't just sleepwalk through life, but she lived life and she did it because she held on to what was going on. She reflected on what God was doing in her life and she remembered it because she pondered it deeply in her heart. I invite you to stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in our Father's love for us, we now approach him with all of our needs. that the Church may effectively proclaim to the world the divinity of Christ and the special role of our Blessed Mother, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That Church leaders may be strengthened by God's grace as they face the challenges of the new year, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the leaders of nations will seek equality and peace for all people as they enact just laws, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the prayers of the Mother of God may strengthen all mothers to follow her example of welcoming new life despite fear, doubt, and uncertainty. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the lonely and neglected may be encouraged by our prayers and concern for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died in faith may dwell in Christ's abundant love for eternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We continue to offer our prayers for vocations here in our diocese and throughout the world as we pray. Almighty Father, we beg you for an increase in religious vocations and holy marriages in our diocese. Help us to be generous in our response to your call. Choose from our homes those who are needed for your work and strengthen us with the courage to say yes and to follow you. Help us as a diocese, as a parish, as families to encourage and foster vocations to the priesthood permanent diaconate, and consecrated life. We commend our prayers to our patroness, Mary, Queen of the Rosary, and ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. 
for our good and good of all this holy church. O God, who in your kindness begin all good things and bring them to fulfillment, grant to us who find joy in the solemnity of the Holy Mother of God that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, so one day we may rejoice in its completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name in the motherhood of the Blessed Ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, she brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. History of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God 
with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all your saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Is this the great I am? King of kings, the one who's come to set the captives free. How can one so small accomplish all these things? And yet you have enraptured me. You enraptured. Let us pray. We have received this heavenly sacrament with joy, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that it may lead us to eternal life. For we rejoice to proclaim the blessed ever Virgin Mary, mother of your son and mother of the church, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Um, as we begin this new year, one of the things just to remind y'all of is that we are praying with you, we're praying for you, and I'm um, just so grateful um, for what God has done, and we give God thanks ahead of time for what he is going to do. So we pray, St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan in all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And mighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.